lost in a desert. A stupid mistake that tested the courage and military discipline of Lance Corporal Jason Rother beyond many tests he might have faced in some future battle. It was a test that he won in every sense of bravery and endurance, yet it's small consolation to the loved ones he left behind. Our producer Sharon Diesenhouse went to the Mojave Desert for this extraordinary story. <laughs> Nineteen-year-old Lance Corporal Jason Rother died in the desert during peacetime. He'd left the icy climate of his native Minneapolis. He'd left his family, and he'd left his 17-year-old fiance, all to pursue his boyhood dream as a loyal Marine. He might have been a hero and a husband and a father someday, but forgotten by his colleagues, Jason died alone after a brave struggle that would have made any Marine proud. He was an excellent role model for me. Um, I wanted to be a lot like him in a lot of ways. The Marine motto is the few, the proud, the Marines. And Jason was one of the best. Kind of a happy-go-lucky, ideal kid. I would take him to the grocery store. He was supposed to be helping me shop. And he would deliberately get about a half an aisle behind me and pretend that he was disabled and come trolloping after me, Mom, Mom, don't leave me. <laughs> but young Jason was left behind at 7 p.m. August 30th. It was a terrible, irreversible mistake. Jason was on War Games, a five-day-long realistic simulation of combat with live ammunition in California's Mojave Desert. It was to be a critical test of equipment and men. After three days, Jason was posted alone as a road guide, even though it's standard operating procedure for Marines to be posted in pairs during maneuvers. As night fell, he waved his light as a signal every hour until 1 a.m. After that, no one ever saw Jason alive again. He'd been working for three days. Uh, he was put out there at night by himself at this post with three quarts of water and two meals. He probably ate those meals, and this young, exhausted Marine went to sleep. The battalion came through. He woke up the next morning. There's no one there. By now, the ground temperature was hitting 190 degrees, and the air temperature in the sun was 130. Jason Rother was in trouble, so he set a rock arrow in the ground and started to walk. He left a directional arrow telling them where he was going, along with his jacket and helmet, saying, this is me, this is where I went, find me, come and follow me. The arrow pointed in a straight easterly direction where Jason had been dropped off straight towards the pass and where he had been camping the night before. Jason had no map, no compass, so he went back in the direction he came from. When Jason's company pulled out of the area, no one had noticed he was missing till he had been gone nearly 47 hours. By that time, Jason Rother was probably already dead. Ironically, it seems, to have been a count of arms and not of men that finally alerted the Marines that Jason had been left behind. I don't know this for a fact, uh, but the way uh, it was determined that Lance Corporal Rother was missing was um, an armorer, and I may be wrong, an armorer had counted the rifles and there was a rifle missing. Uh, that rifle belonged to Jason Rother, and there was an attempt to locate Rother, and they couldn't find Rother. And someone uh, finally said, uh, I think he was left out in the field. The Marine motto is Semper Fidelis, Latin for always faithful. True to his motto, Jason kept his Marine ID and most of his gear with him till the very end. But even faith couldn't help him beat the elements. In the desert environment, we measure their survivability in hours. He was dropped out uh, at his post at 1900 hours on August the 30th. And he probably died late of the afternoon of August the 31st. He probably died that next afternoon. So by the time the Marines conducted their search, which was approximately 47 hours after his point last seen, they were looking for a body. What followed was a tragic case of too little, too late on the grandest scale. The Marines spent huge amounts of time and money trying to locate Jason, all the while multiplying their mistakes. What they did was came in there with a large number of vehicles, large helicopters, and people on foot, and they destroyed all, any and all clues uh, that would help us find Jason. I would assume that out of those thousand Marines that were out there, none of them had ever been involved in a search. 
so they did not know uh, search techniques. They did the best they could. Uh, they put forth a tremendous effort. But the Marines' best was nowhere near good enough. Even though Jason left an arrow pointing east, they concentrated their search going west. Their reasoning behind that uh, was that he was a Marine. He knew that was the direction of travel that the convoy was going, and that would be the direction that he would go. While the search for Jason went on around the clock, the Marines notified Jason's parents that their son was missing. I was scared to death when they called and said they were going to come over. Um, in the back of my mind, from what I've seen in movies, and the only time they come to see you is when they're going to tell you that your son is dead. For four days, the Marines covered a 47-square-mile area looking for Jason. But by Sunday, September 4th, they had given him up for dead. Jason's family couldn't accept his disappearance, and their anguish was compounded by allegations by some Marines that Jason had not been abandoned, but had gone AWOL. If you were out there at the point last seen, the last thing on your mind would be going AWOL, because you're not going to make it. For two months, Jason's family held on to a dim hope of finding him alive. At the end of October, the Marines invited them to the base in the Mojave Desert so they could see firsthand how vast the area was where Jason was lost. When they got there, they began to resign themselves to the fact that Jason might never be found. I have to believe that there is a higher power, that there is a God, and this was his plan for whatever reason. You know, if Jason had been home and not in the Marines, he may have. You know, if this was his time, he would have died anyway. In November, the Marines conducted a second, more extensive search for Jason, still with no success. Then on December 4th, Jason's body was finally found. More than 17 miles from the point where he was last seen, the discovery was made by Captain Dean Nadler. We got within 100, 100 yards of it. You could see that it was uh, uh, clothing and got closer, and then I, it was Jason Rother's clothing. His name was uh, in the, uh, etched on the belt. How tragic the irony that Jason lost his final battle after walking 17 miles in the blistering heat, only to die within one mile of the highway and a well-traveled train track. He had not gone AWOL. He had trudged through the desert with almost all of his Marine gear. True to the end, to the Marine motto, always faithful. I think all of us were, were feeling that, uh, a, a feeling of admiration that he had gotten that far. Had gotten that far, had all of his equipment with him, and everything was so military yet. Uh, a lesser man would have, would have succumbed miles down the road. You know, you had to take your hand off to him. It was a tremendous feat. Corporal Rother's story. The Corps declined to come.